So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the class on business statistics. So probably this is our last chapter, last class on statistical description on data. So when we are talking about the statistical description of data, this probably will be our last class. So just a quick recap, recap of what I have done so far in the statistical uh, description of a data. What I have done so far. So first, I I have spoken about what is data is all about so when we talk about a data data can be either qualitative data or a data can be either quantitative data in statistics it is very important that data should be expressed numerically so that is very important for us so that is a limitation of statistics that in the case of statistics the data should be expressed numerically in case of statistics we need lot of data all together then only we can work on statistics so when we study the 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 theoretical concept of statistics you may get a question about what are the limitation of statistics so the limitation of statistics is that statistics should be numerically expressed next thing the statistics works on aggregate of facts then then the third thing is that statistics give you approximate answer statistics is all about research whenever we do research in statistics the research is limited to the data what we have so with the data you can prove anything with the data you can disprove anything so it doesn't mean that that is the end of the story it just 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 an outcome based upon the data what we have so statistics is all about working on a data so whenever whenever we we work on data basically the first thing what we try to do in statistics is to collect the data so whenever we talk about uh, collecting data then we have two kinds of data we can have a primary data or we can have a secondary data primary data is the data which we collect first time from our hard work so that is called primary data the person who collect the primary data are called enumerator the different methods are there to collect primary data either they are direct observation method or either they they are based on direct interview method or they are based on indirect interview or mail questionnaires by all these ways we collect the primary data once we have a primary data with us it is very important that the person who collect the primary data whom we called as a enumerator they should have they should have proper knowledge about the purpose of doing the research okay so we have a primary data or what we can do whenever we do research we can simply do our research on the secondary data okay secondary data is the data which is already available so whenever we we work on the process of statistics either we can work on descriptive statistics or either we can work on inferential statistics descriptive statistics is all about working on population while inferential statistics is all about working on a sample sample which is a subset of the population so the subset some part of the population we take and we do research on them to understand the complete population okay so that is called inferential statistics while the descriptive statistics is all about analyzing each and every parameter which is the part of population what is population population is some total of all the elements on which we want to do research that is called as population so i hope you understood what is population what is sample what is descriptive statistics what is inferential statistics what is primary data what is secondary data so once we have a data with us we try to organize and classify the data in different groups the, that organization classification what we do it can be quantitative classification it can be qualitative classification it can be geographical classification or it can be chronological classification once the classification and organization part is done then the next part what we do we try to work on the analysis part and whenever we work on the analysis part uh, we can either do univariate analysis or bivariate analysis or multivariate analysis okay so when, when what is univariate analysis univariate analysis is all about focusing on one variable only that is called univariate analysis while bivariate analysis means you trying to establish the relation between two variable so in bivariate analysis we study correlation and regression in univariate analysis we study measure of central tendency we study a uh, dispersion 
uh, uh, so we we study them under univariate analysis. So basically, uh, basically when we are uh, analyzing the data, analyzing the data is all about applying mathematics to to work on the data. Whenever we apply mathematics to work on data, that part is called analysis on the data. Once the analysis part is done. Uh, we need to tell to the world the inference what we got from the analysis that is called present that is called presentation of the data so when we talk about presentation of the data in the case of presentation of a data we have textual presentation we have tabular presentation we have diagrammatic presentation we have graphical presentation so when we talk about tabular presentation is all about creating table and then analyzing the data in the form of table presenting them in that way so when we talk about a table a table consists of components like a header then it can consist of component like a caption then stub then body then footnote then source note going further when we talk about diagrammatic presentation data we talked about line diagram bar diagram pie chart under line diagram we studied simple line diagram multiple line diagram subdivided then logarithmic line diagram and then and then multiple axis line diagram under bar diagram we studied simple bar diagram multiple bar diagram percentage bar diagram sub divided bar diagram then next thing what we need to study uh, in today class we will we'll talk about graphical presentation of data so we will talk about graphical presentation of data so when we talk about graphical uh, presentation of data so under graphical presentation of data so we talk about graphs like uh, we talk about graphs like histogram we we'll talk about graphs like histogram we we'll talk about frequency polygon we we'll talk about frequency polygon we we'll talk about frequency polygon then we we'll talk about frequency curve we we'll talk about frequency curve and then we will talk about og then we will talk about og so these things are what we are going to study today and with this we'll end up this chapter graphical presentation of data and statistical description of data so when we talk about histogram uh, so when we are talking about histogram so this is what you call as a histogram this is what you can see so if you have a data uh, the data when you have a histogram then your data uh, should be as a continuous class interval your data should be in the form of continuous class interval so if your data is there in the form of continuous class interval and if you plot them graphically in the form of rectangles like this then we call this as a histogram okay everyone so i hope you can understand this is called histogram so uh, so by using uh, by using remember this is very important so by using histogram by using histogram by using histogram by using histogram graphically 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 we can determine graphically we can determine by using histogram graphically uh, we can determine mode remember this this comes in many exam so by using histogram graphically we can determine mode so you must be wondering now what is mode suddenly what is this term mode so those those who have studied uh, statistics in their bcom or bba that they, they definitely know what is mode those who have not studied for them other background student mode would be little bit different word you never heard of what is mode so what is basically mode uh, so a mode basically uh, means means the data which repeat the maximum amount of time that we call as a mode so mode when we talk about mode uh, so when garment manufacturing company uh, when they manufacture garments in india when shoe manufacturing company they man manufacture shoes in india uh, they basically what they do they basically use mode so they know that average indian is like i'm just telling you uh, simple some some dummy example so according to the according to the uh, according to the shoe manufacturing company average indian have a shoe size of 7 to 8 so because average indian have a shoe size of 7 to 8 so uh, what what the shoe manufacturing company do 
uh, they manufacture the maximum shoes of seven to eight size. So if if someone if you, if any of you is have is very tall or any of you is very short, so if you go to any any shoe shop, uh, you go to Louis Vuitton or Van Heusen, you go any showroom and ask for a shoe of size six or you size of ten, you you may get very difficult to get. But if you have a size of seven to eight, you go any shop, you'll get the shoe. Why? Why so? Because because they do that. They 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 don't manufacture shoes of same size equal number. If if there's a shirt manufacturing companies there, so they will not manufacture the shirts of from size thirty eight to forty six same 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 number. They know that average Indian is having a size shirt size of forty or forty two something like that. So they manufacture the maximum shirt of that size. I hope you are getting that logic. so what they are doing here they are using mode what is mode mode basically means the data which repeat the maximum so that is basically we call as mode so graphically we can determine histogram by using mode so how we do basically so you, you just choose out of all the rectangle choose the rectangle which has the maximum height so out of all rectangle choose the rectangle which has the maximum height i hope you are getting this So the rectangle which is having maximum height is this. This is a rectangle having the maximum height. So out of all rectangles, choose the rectangle having the maximum height. I hope you got that. Once you get that, you know that rectangle. What you do? Just choose this point. Suppose this is A. You choose this point B. You choose this point. Suppose this is C. Choose this point. Suppose this is D. Okay. Now what you do? Use scale. And draw a line connecting this end to this end. Use scale and draw the line connecting A to B. Similarly, connecting C to D. Similarly, connecting C to D. Similarly, connecting C to D. So use scale and join this point like this. Okay, everyone. Now, now, now the point where these two lines met. Now the point where these two lines met. Now the point where these two lines. This is the mode. This is the mode. So remember this. Uh, if you, in your schooling also, ten standard, nine standard, you have done this. Same thing you have done this. Same thing we'll do now also. So you have to remember this graphically how you can determine mode from histogram. This is the way how you need to do. clear everyone i hope everyone understood this so this is called this is called uh, histogram and graphically this way we can find mode okay everyone okay everyone so you understood what is histogram okay then then what is basically next thing what we need to understand is the frequency polygon now the next thing what we need to study is the frequency polygon next thing what we need to study is the is the frequency polygon so uh, so how to work on frequency polygon see this frequency polygon so how to work on frequency polygon to find the frequency polygon what you do to find the to find the to find the frequency polygon to find the frequency polygon what we will do basically uh, we will Take the midpoint to find the frequency polygon. What you do? Take the midpoint. Take the midpoint. Take the midpoint of all. Take the midpoint of all. You can find the midpoint here. You can find the midpoint. You can find the. So you can find the midpoint. What is the midpoint of this? The midpoint of this would be one forty two point five. And everyone understand midpoint of this would be one forty seven point five. Everyone understand this, right? So if I drag this,
so what you do find the midpoint so find the midpoint of this okay now what you do uh, once you found the midpoint of them draw a line draw a line draw a curve which connect this midpoint draw a curve which connect this midpoint draw the curve which connect this midpoint this is called as frequency polygon this is called as frequency polygon so the this the line curve the line curve the line curve what you get by joining the midpoints of the class interval of a histogram that we called as frequency polygon so this line curve what you get we call this line curve as a frequency polygon I hope you understood this. Clear, everyone. I hope everyone understood this. This, this, the line curve. What we get, we call this line curve as a frequency polygon. fine everyone so going further now uh, we will talk about og going further uh, we'll once we once we understood this now going further we'll talk about og so when we talk about og og can be of two type it can be less than og og can be two type it can be either less than og or it can be either more than og so og are basically of two type it can be either uh, less than og or the og can be either uh, more than og so basically uh, when we talk about less than og basically when we talk about less than og we get a less than og from less than less than cumulative frequency we get less than og from less than cumulative frequency we get less than og from less than cumulative frequency and we get more than og from more than cumulative frequency and we get more than og from more than cumulative uh, frequency so so og are basically of two type they can be uh, less than og or they can be more than og so less than og they are basically of basically they are they are from less than cumulative frequency by more than og they are basically more than cumulative frequency so we, here we are talking about two kinds of og less than og and more than og fine so what is basically og uh, either you talk about a uh, less than og or either uh, you talk about more than og uh, they are basically they are basically a line curve they are basically line curve uh, which talks about cumulative frequency they are basically a line curve which talks about cumulative frequency they are basically line curve which talks about cumulative frequency hmm. so here you can see this suppose this is that everyone pay attention here so so like this you can see suppose this is the class interval this is a class interval with this is the frequency this is the this is the class interval this is the frequency so you got this class interval and frequencies now uh, you, what you can do you can find less than cumulative frequency less than cumulative frequency of them so what less than cumulative frequency i think everyone understand this is 4 plus 10 that is 14 then this is 14 plus 12 Then it is twenty six. This is twenty six plus twenty. That is forty six. Then this is forty six plus sixteen. It is sixty two. Then it is sixty two plus six. It is sixty eight. And then it is sixty eight plus three. It is seventy one. So you understood uh, less than cumulative frequency. Then uh, more than cumulative frequency is like this is three. Then this is three plus six. You'll get nine. Then nine plus sixteen that is twenty five. Then twenty five plus twenty that is forty five. Then forty five plus twelve that is fifty seven. 
then 57 plus 10 that is 67 67 plus 4 that is 71 i hope you understood this less than and more than cumulative frequency yesterday we spent a lot of time understanding this less than and more than cumulative frequency we spent a lot of time putting effort or understanding the less than and more than a cumulative frequency clear everyone so if you draw a line curve if you draw a line curve of this less than cumulative frequency so this is now this is a final output less than cumulative frequency and more than cumulative frequency now if you draw a line curve if you draw a line curve of less than cumulative frequency, then it are less than OG. And if you draw a line curve of more than cumulative frequency, then it is called more than OG. I think everyone is understanding. So if I draw a line curve of less than cumulative frequency, then it is called less than OG. This is this is the this is called this is less than OG. This is less than OG while this is more than OG while this is more than OG. This is the curve of more than OG. The point where the less than and more than OG meet, this point is called as median. The point where the less than and more than OG meet, that point we called as the median. So remember this uh, graphically. Remember this graphically. Graphically, graphically. We can determine median graphically. We can determine median graphically we can determine median by using OG by using OG by using OG so graphically we can determine median by using OG so OG are of two types less than OG and they can be more than OG so graphically we can determine median by using OG so the point of intersection of less than OG with more than OG that 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 point of intersection will give us the median. Clear everyone. Any doubt anyone? So the point of intersection of less than OG with more than OG, that point is called as median. So remember that graphically uh, we can determine graphically we can determine a median through OG diagram graphically we can determine uh, so graphically we can determine graphically uh, we can determine uh, the the mode through histogram remember this now uh, now after that uh, after that uh, so after that uh, when we talk about frequency curve after that, when we'll talk about frequency curve, after this, when we'll talk about frequency curve, after this, when we talk about frequency curve, so frequency curve is a smooth curve in which the total area we considered as a unity, where the frequency curve for the distribution can be easily, we can obtain that by drawing a smooth and free hand curve. So the midpoint of the upper side of the rectangle forming the histogram. Okay, so so it is it, we can draw it by using free hand like the example of frequency curve uh, can be frequency polygon what we did under frequency curve these are not so important you have different kinds of curve like either you have bell shaped curve you have either 
well shaped curve then you have u shaped curve under frequency curve you have well shaped curve you have u shaped curve then you have a j shaped curve then you have j shaped curve and then uh, you have mixed curve okay mixed curve means a uh, mix of u j and bell shape so when we talk about a uh, bell shape curve what is bell shape curve bell shape curve is like this bell shape curve is like this so in we study normal distribution is actually bell shape curve when we say normal distribution normal distribution is actually it is a bell shaped curve so it is actually a bell shaped curve so we when we talk about normal distribution whatever i am teaching you here measure of central tendency measure of dispersion everything follow normal distribution curve where we believe that the maximum data aggregate at the center we have believe that the maximum data aggregate at the center so the tendency of the data to aggregate at the center that we called as the measure of central tendency after this chapter i'll start this only measure of central tendency after this chapter i'll start this only measure of central tendency it is a nature of a data where where the maximum data will try to aggregate at the center that we called as a measure of central tendency is not like all the data will be at the center the data will disperse from the center whenever we see the data the data will disperse from the center so they can disperse plus minus of one standard deviation so as per the calculation we believe that 68 68.28% of data lies in the plus minus of one standard deviation the sigma this means standard deviation i hope you heard of standard deviation so we believe that a 68.28% of the data lies in the plus minus of one standard deviation while 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 95% while 95.44% of the data lies in the plus minus of two standard deviation while 95.44% of data lies in the plus minus of two standard deviation so so one minute. One minute. So where we believe that, where we believe that, ninety nine point, we believe that one minute of view online. Where we believe that ninety nine point seven three percent of the data. lies in the plus minus of three standard deviation so uh, is like is is like i gave you an example that day if you remember i told you like imagine if i close my eyes and i tell you people to arrange yourself the way you want okay then if i open my eye it's not like everyone will be together maximum people will be together that is called measure of central tendency next class we'll start measure of central tendency only where we'll study uh, properties like a uh, mean median mode we'll study about arithmetic mean geometric mean harmonic mean it's like not all the data will be center data will be dispersed from the center that is called measure of dispersion in measure of dispersion we talk about range we talk about quartile deviation mean deviation standard deviation variance all that we study under measure of dispersion okay so it is a property of data so in bell shaped curve we basically study normal distribution curve whatever i am teaching you it it is normal distribution curve basically the data can follow either normal distribution curve or it follow a uh, binomial distribution or it follow poisson distribution so we'll restrict our discussion right now with normal distribution only and under normal distribution whatever is studying we believe that it is they are continuous distribution curve so after now after bell shaped curve the next kind of curve we can study is a u shaped curve u shaped curve if you remember a u shaped curve u shaped curve normally u shaped curve 
is normally we called as a parabola v shape curves normally we called as a parabola so parabola we study parabola whenever we study quadratic equation so whenever we study quadratic equation whenever we study quadratic equation we normally study parabola so under quadratic equation which can be represented in this form ax square plus bx plus c so that is called as quadratic equation the graph of quadratic equation is always like this uh, u shape curve means what do you mean by u shape curve sir i don't like mathematics and all so talk layman u shape curve means first it will decrease then it will increase okay so in next next semester you will study financial leverage so if you bring debt in your capital structure then your cost of capital will first decrease it will go to the minimum and then it will increase i hope you are understanding i hope you are understanding this so that is u shape curve so if you eat too much protein if you eat eat too much protein so what will happen if you eat too much protein so if you eat too much protein what will happen if you eat non veg protein and all what will happen so if you gradually initially when you eat too much of non veg or or if you eat too much of protein drinks and all if you drink or going to gym so gradually it will build your muscle because to build muscle we need protein because protein contain amino acid so you need you need protein if you get protein your muscles will build up but if you start eating too much protein beyond the threshold then what you happen your muscle instead of growing will start degrading because amino acid which is a constituent of protein will will start excreting too much amino acids in the body which is not good for the body this is u shape curve so i just gave you few example then we talk about j shape curve then the next thing is the j shape curve j shape curve is something which start with the minimum value in the beginning it will go then dig little bit and then it will only increase that is called j shape curve okay this is the j shape curve so i am not getting any example right now for the j shape curve so j this is the j shape curve now j shape curve if i say i can give you an example of j shape curve j shaped curve i can talk with an example of j shape curve like if you start studying if imagine if you start studying after this class if you say no no sir has given lot of gyan to us to study so now i'll study 4 hour 5 hour 6 hours a day so when you will start studying then your concentration level will not be good because you will distract through mobile whatsapp message insta message this that and all you will get distracted so your concentration level will decrease 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 it went to very low and then you say no you if you say i have to study and i'll do very hard work and then gradually your concentration level will only increase so this is somewhat like a g shape curve and ultimately you reach nirvana so if you study like this you become rishi muni so you you can float your body in air you will become a sakti man so if you become that much concentrated okay so that is j shape curve so then mixed curve basically means combination of all these curves uh, in different ways depending upon the the different different forms of research that is called mixed curve so guys i hope you understood this anyone have any doubt any question anyone in any question any doubt
Any doubt, anyone? One minute. 